Hi everyone, welcome to our session today at KCD Ukraine. Uh, we're so happy to be here today and we're going to talk about how to avoid the dev plateau with CRDs. So first, uh, let us introduce briefly. Uh, here is Guy, our awesome and brilliant solution engineer at Commodore. Hey Rona, I'm very excited and with me, uh, Rona, uh, one of our most amazing uh, developer. Um, though we are dev first operation platform when each one the organization dev devops can access and get full visibility uh, troubleshooting and advanced capabilities to uh, be successful on your day operation with kubernetes so without further ado let's get started um imagine kubernetes as a vast ocean, ever expanding and infinitely deep. But something is missing here, right? Uh, there are almost or no coral here. And at the end, we want to create a healthy ecosystem in it. So what do we do? Man-made object into the ocean as a base for ocean life, like coral and fish. And once we create a base for other life to succeed in it, we're getting a thriving ecosystem. And why am I talking about it? If Kubernetes is the ocean, then the man-made object is the platform or CRD. And this is the thriving ecosystem that can be created using CRDs. Now, if we go back from the ocean into land, uh, let's talk about how Kubernetes adoption looked like when Kubernetes uh, just started. So the early adopters were not just uh, small startup money, but also large companies with great talent and uh, budget like Google. But in between these small startups and Google reside most of the companies, right? And most of the companies had to face big challenges in order to in its early stages. Um, so Kubernetes took an approach to add more core functionalities for wider adoption. They've added things like deployment, stateful set, and other application capabilities um, that allowed the organization to use and adopt Kubernetes. So therefore, Kubernetes became the dominant platform, but there's still lack of enterprise concerns. Support the demanding challenges for adoption, Kubernetes is adding more and more enterprise capabilities. Um, if you look at recent versions, you'll see that security and data are now top concerns and they have been changing a lot in recent versions. And Kubernetes reached more on the enterprise rather than on the core side, which is fine because, like any other technology, it went into the phase of what will take us uh, to the next step? Exactly. And when we take a look at the capabilities that added to Kubernetes and still adding, we can see that some of the core capabilities are were improved much better on the early stages on the left side. And now we can see that more and more enterprise features are coming in. It's not bad. It just means that core feature, core capabilities to make our application orchestrate much better are a little bit reduced in order to make wider adoption for different organization in a different stages when they need like more security and storage and abilities along its adoption. So it's a phase of turning adoption into a different level of organization. And when we to two of two major like releases of Kubernetes. The first one is 1.9 and the other is 1.20 recently released. We can see that on the left side, most of the advancement were on the application and the non-Kubernetes <coughs> workloads at this stage. So can you imagine your cluster without deployment, stateful set, daemon set, or replica set? There is no cluster that can be run and operate without those capabilities. Also, we can see that Kubernetes is open to a very new workloads in this area, like running on GPU, Windows machine, open CRDs, and 
when we take a look on the other side, Kubernetes 125 is very focused on the security and the storage side. And now it gets more stable moving into this phase. So the focus from <laughs> the core side to the next stage of adoption. And the phase is the, the fact you need to adapt Kubernetes. It's not only about running applications. Kubernetes is orchestrating the containers, the networking, and everything regarding that. But the fact that in order to adapt Kubernetes, you need to face more than that. You need to face how do I monitor my cluster? My, how do I like auto scaling when there is like different auto scaling uh, methods that I want to put in place? Uh, you need to think about observability and you need to think about cost reduction, optimization, all the things that is will not help you to face. Uh, they are facing in a very, Kubernetes solve it in a very basic level. If you want to effectively and Kubernetes face those challenges. And those challenges are not nice to have. That you may want or, or maybe want in the future or can be a little addition to what you have. And optimizing without monitoring, without adding observability, uh, you will not get the value that you were looking for. So those are, for most of the organization, must challenges to face with. So what we need is a little different approach to those, because if Kubernetes will not help us, maybe something, help, something else can help us. So for example, let's say I'm running a gaming uh, application and we have a customer that using that and their example with you. So in our gaming application, it needs to be scaled based on the number of active users. Well, if I have one pod, it can support only 10 users because the backend system is going to run most of the every lifting of the. So obviously, when we need more scaling for these users, we cannot rely on CPU and memory. We want to make sure that we have the number of active or concurrent users within our platform. So for that, we need a new methodology of scaling, which is not come out of the box from Kubernetes. But we do want it. To, uh, we do want to be auto orchestrated, and we will have a controller that will help us to do the scaling. Something goes wrong and will help us to orchestrate that. We do want to make it Kubernetes native configuration, so we will be able to apply it with our application, yeah. code, image, and any other configuration this app requires. But we also wanted to make it custom and flexible. In Kubernetes, we have this strict API, like the deployment one, that every field matters. But we want to have this custom face. We can extend it at any time, and we can use it anytime. So for example, if we need uh, to be more users uh, at some stage, then we will be able to create pre-baked maybe pods for that. So Rona, maybe do you have some kind of idea for a solution that we can apply in place? Sure. So my solution is obviously serious. And thanks to Kubernetes, we can add custom resources such that everyone can create their own custom resource and controller, a controller to extend the Kubernetes API with new this gives you tons of flexibility and customization so you can uh, teams can customize their own platform based on their needs so users can use third party tools that utilize crds such as our rollouts or custom uh, controller like guys gaming autoscaler so if i were to uh, install guys scaler on my cluster I could just run kubectl get gaming autoscaler and the same Kubernetes API will give me all the information uh, it has on the gaming autoscaler on my cluster. The same as I if I were to run kubectl get pod. And that is just so uh, if we want to talk a bit about how it works, when the user creates an in uh, what uh, sorry, uses custom resources, 
that define the desired state and state and configuration application using custom resource definition. And when a user creates uh, an instance of a custom resource, that is adds it to uh, at CD, and then the this custom resource can uh, be accessed and managed by end endpoints, just like any other Kubernetes resource. And if you think about it, CRDs together with um, operators give you almost unlimited possibilities, and you can do basically whatever you want. So this is really nice in theory, right? But let's give you um, a more specific of it and how we can use other tools and CRDs to face some of the challenges that we talked about just right. now. Right. Other tools you mentioned is very interesting. Yeah, they are. <laughs> so um, Guy and I actually wrote some simple and uh, small application, right? Two deployments, uh, each deployment has two. And now we want to scale our consumer based on the number of messages in the Kafka topic. So this cannot be the built-in HPA in Kubernetes. So we need another solution. And Keda will allow us to do the auto-scaling which is great, but it's not the last challenge that we need to face. We have many more, as we saw on the list before. Right. So at some point, we were required to add more security to our clusters. And, and one of the things that we add is to deploy certificates. And certificates is a big concern because you need to manage them, you need to create them, you need to renew them. A lot of orchestration that you need to do in order to use certificate efficiently. So we utilize one of the tools, Cert Manager, to managing secrets within Kubernetes in order to help us. So we deploy Cert Manager, and then we create certificate under a Kubernetes resource. So what's next? That's very cool. Uh, so Guy and I are on the monitors that we configured manually, and we want to pack our application together with the monitors configuration all in also we want to store it in git so we will have history version management and more like gitops in implementation right so we're going to use alert managers uh, crds and we can configure like three five ten and, and that make it very awesome but it's not the last stage so we do want to have to configure CD properly. We want our deployment to not be the script that someone wrote uh, a year and a half ago. We do want to have a tool that will take our application, we will define our application, it will take deployment automatically. And, and very common tool is Argo CD. Mm -hmm. We can deploy Argo CD, we can deploy the application as CRs in there, and we will get all the we can bring in a Kubernetes native way, which is great. Yeah. What's next? Uh, okay, so now we want to enforce configuration policy, and we definitely don't want to do it by ourselves. We don't write. We don't want to write a crazy program. So we're going to use Kiverno, which is a, a policy engine for Kubernetes. Amazing, amazing, and and we know how much effort is to is mm -hmm. integrate those into the CI/CD pipelines, and actually make them really streamline and maintain them over time. Yeah. And next, we want to add more visibility into our clusters and open telemetry is kind of a telemetry and metrics tool, which is popular in these days. So maybe we want to use some operators in the CR configure and the collector in order to deploy open telemetry, but also configure all the things that we need in place. Mm -hmm. uh, and now we find ourselves with another a uh, tool and CR CRDs in place. Nice. Um, so what we did is that we installed Grafana using Helm shots, but now we want to move into an operator that will help us with the day two operations of Grafana. So luckily CRDs uh, cannot manage only specific things. They can also manage or any other uh, third party tool. 
in this case, we're going to use uh, to use it to manage our own Grafana. Cool. And now we will not need to do all the day through operations manually in our Grafana cluster. Right. <laughs> and, and after some time, we find out that when you work with them pods, rollout of basic Kubernetes is pretty fine. But when you maybe canary deployment and something that will get more advanced rollout strategy, there is no way to do that out of the box. You will need our own. Uh, so maybe we can deploy Argo rollouts and then make it more advanced uh, configuration to rollouts. Uh, this example is that we are going to demo it right. uh, in a few minutes and show everyone how we can do the migration and utilize uh, the amazing capability which are not out of the box mm -hmm. on Kubernetes. Argo rollout is great and uh, you'll see the demo, you'll like it. Uh, now we have our application is now uh, becoming bigger and we want to move some of our infrastructure components there so we can pack with our own application uh, the managed database that it needs to run or manage Kubernetes cluster better multi-tenancy. So, uh, but to create this in Kubernetes in, um, in a native way. So we're going to use... Amazing project and very popular at the moment. And when we want to go to even more complex architecture, we want to have complex networking architecture, we want to put maybe Istio, some service mesh tool in place, or we do want to go into a multi-cluster, multi-region, uh, we definitely find ourselves using more and more CRDs and tools in order to actually utilize and extend Kubernetes to make it something even bigger than the uh, project already is. And in a simple cluster that we are taking a look at, we can find that in the middle we have the Kubernetes it can be Kubernetes itself, deployment, pods, but we find that we add more and more components and we extend Kubernetes to be uh, very big. And what we think is that when we are facing that, the challenge that no more core uh, activities we will will be added as it's before, mm -hmm. CRDs will be the next phase and you will find a cluster with more and more of those. Yeah, it's amazing that this core um, uh, features to a more robust and great bigger cluster using only CRDs. Great, and amazing. So maybe we'll show a little bit about an example. Yeah. That would be great. So we are jumping in. We want to show an example of a blue-green deployment. Mm -hmm. um, so what happens with blue-green is that at some point you want to understand about how preview and how to switch between active and and make sure that you have preview version that you can take a look before rolling it out. But on the other side, you can revert very fast because you still have the other up and running. That's very important. And the second thing about uh, doing this kind of rollout is that you need to do it manually at some point um, or develop it on our own. That will take so much long for us to put in a new environment, put in a preview, switch the service set, think about all the other areas that we need to take care of in deployment, mm -hmm. uh, rollout. And yeah. what is interesting that using Argo rollout, instead of writing everything on our own, we can use some third party and it will be able to use it in order to get all the value uh, blue-green deployments got to offer. So what we're going to show you is deployments and we change it to Argo rollouts and utilizing blue-green deployments. So just let me share my terminal. Okay, and now what we are going to do is we are going to take a very basic uh, deployment. In this deployment, you can see that we have just an Nginx with 10 replicas, the default rolling update capabilities. Uh, we just added a small delay to the readiness just to show you how fast we can change and 
what are the capabilities of changing it a little bit different. And now we are going to apply it. And what's going to happen is basically that the pod will be created, the deployment will be uh, created. And what we want to do next is to take a look about how this rollout is going to look like. Mm -hmm. And when we are going to wait for these pods to be ready, uh, we want to explain that the rollout of Kubernetes is done in a way that 25%, by default, 25 of the new pods are going up and 25% of the uh, old pods are going down, and then the rollout switch, uh, which makes it hard to revert because you don't have the full capacity of pods mm -hmm. in a previous state. So now we can see that all of our 10 pods are up running and ready. We want to deploy our new version. And, and then just changing the image, nothing special in here. Um, to allow us is to see uh, the pods. So we can see that at the top, the new pods are joining. They are not ready. It will take us some. Other pods are already deleted. So it's not a blue-green deployment. We already lose some of our pods. Uh, the Kubernetes basic capabilities really not allow us to utilize or fill in what is required for us uh, to rolling update. Mm -hmm. So what we want to show is the difference between uh, the Argo rollout and how you can utilize on your own. And this will be maybe good for pods but if we increase the number of pods and use like 100 pods right or more uh it will not work we need another strategy exactly and what we are going to do later is we are going to deployment and we are going to switch it to argo and what's the difference between those is that in an easy way, you can see that the configuration of, yeah. sorry, show you the previous version. You can see that the configuration of Argo rollout just require us to a version of kind. Everything else is pretty similar to a deployment except of the strategy. So instead of writing our own code, we can just configure the strategy mm -hmm. and get these blue green capabilities. And before the demo, we just install Argo rollouts. It's a two command on their website. And what we will do next is we apply the first manifest. And then we are going to watch the rollout. So beside all the nice capabilities, we also get a command line that yeah. will help us to and see what is the active version, what is the stable version at the moment, and what is preview. Obviously, because it's the first version, it's. And what we are going to do next is release our new version. So let's wait for all the pods to be ready. And then, and, oh, there you go. <laughs> now everything is stable and active, which is great. So what's next? Uh, let's apply our second step. Our second step. It's just the change of the image. What we want. As we did before, right? Yeah, it's the same change. But now we can see that we have two versions in here. The version at the bottom, with the previous one, with the stable and active capabilities. Like it's it's the configuration is like stable and active. It's mean all the to those ones. Mm -hmm. And the preview on the top, which is going to be switched automatically but by Argo rollout. And you will see that in a few seconds, the rollout will happen. All the other pods will be changed to the new version. The other pods will be kept for some time in order for us to be revert uh, rapidly if we want to. So rollout is paused. This is preview version. 
the previous version is stable and active, and it's going to be very fast. Oh, there you go. Stable, active, new version. And that's allow us to utilize the blue-green deployment of Argo rollout without doing basically nothing. Yeah. Um, Changing almost anything. <laughs> yeah. And, and that's the example of how you can utilize and CRDs and third-party tools easily without developing your own code. Awesome. Uh, thank uh, Awesome uh, demo. And thanks, everyone, for listening. We had a pleasure being here. Thank you, Ron, and thank you, everyone. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I'm also a fan of Argo, so uh, it was a <laughs> great demo to see. OK, guys, we have a 15 minutes break, so see you at the next session. Thank you. Thank you Thanks. very much. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye.